Let's listen in to Roberta well, Manzola. Forgive me for cross, cutting across you. She's just uh, starting to speak now. That does not jeopardize ongoing investigations or in any way undermine the presumption of innocence. And I will. So if my fury, my anger, my sorrow do not come across, please be assured that they are very much present along with my determination for this house to grow stronger. Make no mistake, the European Parliament, dear colleagues, is under attack. European democracy is under attack. And our way of open, free, democratic societies are under attack. The enemies for demo of democracy for whom the very existence of this parliament is a threat will stop at nothing. These malign actors linked to autocratic third countries have allegedly weaponized NGOs, unions, individuals, assistants and members of the European Parliament in an effort to subdue our processes. Their malicious plans failed. Our services, of whom I am incredibly proud, have been working with relevant national law enforcement and judicial authorities to break up this alleged criminal network for some time. We have acted in sync with authorities to ensure that all legal steps are respected, that all information is preserved, and that where needed, IT equipment is secured, offices are sealed, and house searches are able to be carried out. I accompanied a Belgian judge and police as required by the Belgian constitution to a house search last weekend. As a precautionary measure, again with full respect for the presumption of innocence, I have stripped the vice president mentioned of any tasks and responsibilities related to their role as vice president, and I have convened an extraordinary meeting of the Conference of Presidents to launch an Article 21 procedure to bring their term as vice president to an end in an effort to protect the integrity of this house. I was also scheduled today to announce the opening of the negotiating mandate for the visa waiver report with Qatar and Kuwait. In light of the investigations, this report must be sent back to committee. I also know that we are not at the end of the road. And we will continue to assist in investigations together with other EU institutions for as long as it takes. Corruption cannot pay and we have played our part in ensuring these plans could not materialise. And I must be clear, the allegations are not about left or right or north or south. This is about right and wrong. And I would, I would appeal to you to resist the temptation to exploit this moment for political gain. Do not cheapen the threat that we are facing. Now, I am in politics, like so many of you here, to fight corruption, to stand up for the principles of Europe. This is a test of our values and of our systems. And colleagues, let me assure you that we will meet this test head on. There will be no impunity, none. Those responsible will find this Parliament on the side of the law, and I am proud of our role and assistance in this investigation. There will be no sweeping under the carpet. We will launch an internal investigation to look at all the facts related to the Parliament and to look at how our systems can become yet more watertight. There will be no businesses, business as usual. We will launch a reform process to see who has access to our premises, how these organisations, NGOs and people are funded, what links with third countries they have. We will ask 
for more transparency on meetings with foreign actors and those linked to them. We will, we will shake up this parliament and these towns and I need your help to do it. We will protect those who help us expose criminality and I will work to look at our whistleblower systems to see how can they be made stronger. But I must also say that while we can always look to increase deterrence and transparency, there will always be some for whom a bag of cash is always worth the risk. And what is essential is that these people understand that they will get caught, that our services work and that they will face the full extent of the law, as happened in this case. These are challenging times for us all, but I know and I am convinced that if we work together, we can come out of it stronger. To you, my colleagues who have lived these days with me, uh, let me uh, say again how deeply disappointed I am. I know you all share the same sentiment. And to those malign actors in third countries who think they can buy their way forward, who think Europe is for sale, who think they can take over our NGOs, let me say that you will find this parliament firmly in your way. We are Europeans. We would rather be cold than bought. And now, dear colleagues, together with an agreement of the political groups, and before we officially start uh, this uh, plenary meeting, I will give the floor to the group leader, starting with Manfred Weber. Madam President, dear colleagues, we as EPP Group are shocked. The corruption charges against one of our highest representatives of this European Parliament has significantly damaged our institution and affected the trust of people in the European Union as a whole. The damage to European democracy is too big to be now used for... All right, you are listening there to the European Parliament President, Roberta Metzola, and it was a really rather strong statement indeed from her. This after four officials, including at least one MEP, was arrested over the weekend, linked to allegations of money laundering and corruption associated with the Gulf state of Qatar. European democracy, she said, is under attack. She talked about maligned actors on the world stage. She said those who had committed crimes within the European Union would face the force of the law. She ended by saying, Europe is not for sale. Armin Georgian, our Europe editor, is with me. In Armin, I mean, what did you make of that? That was a particularly strong statement from Metzola, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, she, she's usually pretty direct in how she speaks, but this is um, perhaps the most uh, sort of, um, uh, you know, forthright kind of direct statement that I've I've heard from her. Um, she certainly was not hiding her fury, as she put it. And uh, she, yeah, she she made it plain right from the start that uh, you know th there was something almost approaching a kind of sense of betrayal in a way. I got the impression about how uh, some of her colleagues had allegedly acted uh, in this whole scandal. Um, yes, she didn't mention Qatar by name, but she did talk about autocratic actors uh, and uh, the democratic processes of the European Union being under attack. In terms of concrete action, though, which is perhaps the, the most significant part of all this, uh, she said that the um, Vice President, uh, Eva uh, Kaili, uh, who's at the centre of the scandal, she's been stripped of any tasks related to her job as one of the vice presidents of the European Parliament. But there's also a formal procedure to end her tenure as, as vice president of the European Parliament, which is something called an Article 21 procedure. So that formally still has to go ahead. So there was a decision made by Roberta Mazzola, but I think there's this other procedure as well, which has to be uh, followed through in order to actually formally end uh, Eva Kaili's tenure as a, a vice president of the European Parliament. So I'm assuming that that is going to be the subject of proceedings today and tomorrow in Strasbourg. 
terms of other concrete actions that Metzola was talking about, she said that uh, the moves that had been in the works to waive visas for Qatari <coughs> nationals, uh, that that uh, now has to be essentially frozen uh, and looked at again. So there's not going to be uh, any uh, imminent waiving of visas for Qataris because I suppose in the background of that all is a suspicion that perhaps the decision was going to be made under some sort of Qatari influence. At least that must be the suspicion at this point. So all of that is going to be looked at again. And then she also announced an internal investigation, uh, also new uh, measures to make sure that uh, transparency uh, is is guaranteed when diplomats, sorry, when, when foreign uh, players meet members of the European Parliament, that's something I was talking to you about uh, before we, we went into her speech. Uh, but again, we'll have to wait and see what uh, the sort of details are, what, what kind of, um, inve uh, sorry, what, what sort of investigative powers uh, are going to be attributed to whoever actually does the investigation because we know that earlier in the day, for example, the, um, uh, uh, the Transparency International, the anti-corruption uh, NGO, said that there has to be a fully independent uh, auditor, uh, not auditor, I forget what the exact um, word was, but uh, I I independent um, uh, sort of uh, oversight of the European Parliament that essentially for transparency the EU has spent too long sort of um, not being being too lax to be able to sort out this problem by itself and therefore essentially couldn't do it by itself it needs some kind of outside player to do that. All right, Armin George, and thanks very much indeed for your snap analysis and what we were just hearing there uh, from Roberta Vetzola uh, on those allegations of corruption within the European Parliament. We'll take